Steve Cook, welcome to the AFC Bournemouth dressing room. We're here to celebrate your 350th appearance for the club with a pictorial look through your career here. So let's start with the first picture, September 2011, where it all started for you. Brighton and Hove Albion against Liverpool. And there you are having the better of Luis Suarez. Yeah, it was um, a really big game actually in my career, looking back at it now. Um, at the time, it was obviously just nice to play a game. Um, didn't find out until I was in the change room actually when, when Poye at the time revealed the team. But <clears throat> kind of, I went a, a good period of time from making my debut to having a few loans and then making this against obviously Liverpool and some world class players. And then we lost the game, and, but I really enjoyed the game, played quite well, and it kind of made me realise that I could possibly play um, at a good level. A um, few clubs watching um, at the time as well. One being, one being Bournemouth and I think it might have been Steve Gritt and, and Fletch at the time. So um, a huge game, a huge game for me. Um, great learning experience and it's a nice picture that. Now we haven't actually got a picture of what I'm going to ask you next. You talked about those loan spells, one of which was Mansfield. Now on New Year's Day 2011, you lost 7-2 at Grimsby and one Alan Connell scored twice. Yeah, um, <laughs> I do remember that game quite well actually. It was a... Uh, freezing cold day. Um, I'd never obviously been to Grimsby. It was um, a new experience for me. Um, very old school uh, stadium and um, yeah, to, to be beaten 7-2 at any level is, is not good for any player. Um, it was under, um, I think we had a caretaker manager. It was a, the fitness coach at the time was, was taking the job, I think. But yeah, it was a time where I thought to myself, I'm not sure if I'm going to have a good career in this game and um, yeah it definitely hit home I don't think I think I got injured quite soon after that and and come back went back to Brighton and kind of started my rehabilitation of injury and <laughs> whether or not I could play so um, yeah terrible day thanks for that one <laughs> the first of those 350 appearances for Bournemouth came in October 2011 Preston North End away just tell us your memories of that day and how the loan move came about yeah, great day for myself. Um, I, was, I was delighted to come on, come down on loan, uh, obviously initially for the month, because I think a couple of weeks or a week before um, Port Vale, when Mickey Adams at the time, the, the manager that gave me my debut at Brighton, come in for me and the club Brighton then said, no, you won't be going on loan, because um, I was on the bench and in around the first team, which, which I was happy with, but I think Bournemouth was a was a big step up from from that, and they realised I could um, go and play at a good level and see where how I responded. So, yeah, I was uh, I couldn't wait to come down and, and play, and the game worked out really well. Um, and we went on, uh, we had a good bit of form after that, and um, the month flew by. Uh, but then, kind of on a personal note, kind of kicked on a little bit from that Brighton game and realised that yeah, I, I could. I could uh, play at a good level, League One, and, uh, and and see where he went from there. I remember New Year's Eve 2011, Bournemouth played away at Yeovil, winning 3-1. And you played in that game. It was the last of your loan spell. And then he went back to Brighton. It was a very strange sequence of events because you played for Brighton in a 3-0 home win against Southampton, which is that, that next picture there. Yeah, that was um, a really strange, strange time because I'd actually, the week before that, um, went back to Brighton to, to discuss things and Poye actually thought my loan was up and he told me I was on the bench for Brighton on on the Saturday. I was like, well, I can't because I'm still on loan at Bournemouth. So <laughs> um, I don't think I'll make that one. Um, so I was going to come back down, played again, uh, for Bournemouth and then received a phone call saying, um, you're going to be playing against Southampton, so you're, you're coming back. But I, I knew a deal had been agreed with, with Bournemouth. So my agent at the time was like, you can't play. You, you, there's no way you can go back to Brighton and play because your deal's done. You have a sign, but everything's agreed. I was like, nah, right, this is a, a, an amazing opportunity for me in the championship. Um, I played right back. Really strange um, atmosphere for me because I hadn't seen anyone for Brighton for a long time. And, 
went back, played, we won 3-0, I had a, uh, had a really good game. It was quite emotional for me, actually. Came in and Poyo sat me down and was like, we don't want you to go. I was like, okay. Um, they're like, look, we know you've been, you've sorted your like kind of contract out. We can, we can give you the same if you want to stay. But I felt like my loyalties lied elsewhere after agreeing um, to sign for Bournemouth and, and after they give me uh, the actual proper shot that I needed to, to go and play. So um, it was a really <clears throat> difficult uh, couple of hours because I had to kind of let them know that I didn't want to stay and I had to move on and, and go and try and make my, my career elsewhere because I knew I was quite far probably down in the pecking order at Brighton. Um, at that time, I was playing right back, or I played right back, and it wasn't really for me. So, um, the best decision I've ever made. There you are, holding the shirt, having signed permanently, and in your first full season here, 2012-2013, that next picture was taken in September 2012. It was an away game. Have you got any memories of when that might have been? Yeah, that was um, a really, really bad day. Um, Swindon, it was embarrassing. Um, I think we played a, we, we, we had a team talk at the start saying Swindon, yeah, good team, very good wingers. Matt Ritchie scored a, an absolute rocket. Wingers are the strength and we played a diamond, um, which was uh, interesting for a, a player that played, I played right back that game, so it wasn't, <laughs> it was not a good day. Probably one of the, the, the real low points um, in the clubs after obviously Maxim took over, uh, everything started looking up and then we got hammered 4-0 and it was kind of like, yeah, we, we were in a real, we're gonna struggle this year. Um, I think every player that day was was really, really poor for the club. I think you might have handed out a few, um, <laughs> um, a few harsh words uh, for the for the echo the, the following day, which was, was Fully justified because we we really let ourselves down and the club down at that that point and it was um, a really good, difficult time. Eddie Howe returned to the club in the October of that that season, and we move on to April 2013. You got your first goal in a really important game, which sealed promotion against Carlisle. Yeah, um, a really really good day. Um, I'd always thought I could score goals um, and then obviously when you get playing it games go by and you, you don't get them and I think I hit the crossbar and had some good saves made and then throughout that season and to get this goal on on, on, on this day was amazing because we worked on this freak uh, this corner a lot and it's actually Eddie actually called it the Steve Cook corner for for a long duration of time I don't I only scored it once in <laughs> in eight years, but um, I don't think anyone else has scored one. So I managed to have a, have a corner named after me. So, and uh, on the day that we got promoted as well was, was pretty special. And, um, it looks like Tommy's defending me there, so I'm not sure what, he was, what way he was going, but um, I remember the celebrations with, with Harry Arthur and um, he went on to score as well. And um, yeah, a, a big moment in the club's uh, rise as well. Did you manage to get through that champagne in the next picture there with Matt Tubbs? <laughs> I think Tubbs has nicked it off me, and um, I look barely. I think I, I think I was 21 then. Um, so Tubbs, he uh, pulled rank, and I think it was nearly as tall as him. So I thought I'd let him have it. First season in, back in the Championship for the club, 2013, 2014. A proud moment for you in that October in a 5-2 home win against Millwall. Your first Championship goal. Yeah, and I can remember that, that game quite well because I think, did we go 2 0 down? Or it was 2 at half time and came out and scored um, quite quickly. And I can't remember the, the sequence of, of goals. But yeah, it was a. Again, it's when you're a centre half and you, you can chip in with a few goals here and there, it's, it's, it is really nice. And um, especially when you go on to win the game, it's a special feeling. and. That first season in the Championship, we started quite slowly, um, but really grew into it and we only just missed out on the playoffs in the end and the way we finished kind of set us up for the, the season after, I think, and 
I don't know how many goals I've got that year. It might have been two or three, but to get the first one is always really nice. Obviously, like you said, the, um, the, the Sodes were seed at the end of that season for a strong finish. And the following season, obviously, your decision to move here from Brighton was fully vindicated. April 2015, the home win against Bolton, the celebrations and the, and the parade, your memories of that, that day and that week, if you like. Yeah, um, really surreal, extremely surreal. It was uh, when that final, well, when Pewee scored, it was a goosebump moment when the final whistle went and the, the crowd came on. It was, uh, I can't really describe you the, the emotions. It was amazing. Um, but we, we kind of felt that I think in, in this moment it happened with the fans coming on, you couldn't really dwell on it because you had to kind of like get off the pitch and then enjoy the, the, the time after. The the week went extremely fast and then the, the Charlton game, I remember, always remember obviously the fans cheering. It was like, okay, well, Sheffield Wednesday scored and it was more of, you kind of felt like tears were coming on rather than the emotions of joy of the, of the Bolton game. So two contrasting sets of emotions with in a week that everything seems to just go right and it was yeah one of the best weeks of um, my life obviously the, it changed everything for this club and the, this set of players and a lot of the players here have, have never looked back talk about the highs and lows of the Premier League encapsulated in the next two pitches first of all September 2015 a 3-1 a chastening 3-1 defeat away at Norwich City. You got your first Premier League goal, but you didn't really have a great deal to celebrate at the end of that game. That was when maybe the alarm bells were sort of sounding, thinking maybe we could be one season wonders here. Yeah, it was a really, really poor performance. And I, like I say, I scored, but it, it kind of meant nothing, which was a shame because the score in the Premier League is a, is a massive milestone. And um, I, I was really poor this day. Uh, the, the whole team were, were poor, especially in a kit like that, you kind of exposed even more, you know. Um, Norwich were, so Carrow Road's always a difficult place to go and we, we, I think we turned the ball over every other ball and we were, we were really, really poor. And like you say, it kind of was like, oh, maybe we're not good enough, even individually, maybe I'm not good enough to play in this league. And it was a, uh, an eye opener um, from a team that when you play against the Norwiches and, and, and you, you've come up, it's, you need to be close, you know, you have to maybe nick a draw or grind out a, a away win. But when you, you lose convincingly like that, it's like, oh, OK, this could be a long season. But you put it quickly behind you and moving on to April 2016, a 2-1 winner, Aston Villa, where you scored, secured. Premier League status in the first season, which a lot of people didn't think that the club was going to do. Yeah, so if you look at that, that last picture and this one, the, the amount that changed um, in the team was huge. Sometimes you you look for turning points in the season and it was a, any win in the Premier League is extremely hard to get. And um, We won three on a row, three on a bounce twice that season. Uh, it was a lot of points. This this game at Villa, it was a, a really hostile atmosphere because the Aston Villa fans were really, really against the team at the time. I think every t when the team got announced, the Villa team, I always remember it, they booed every name apart from one who was a, a youth product. And we kind of thought, OK, we're, we're all right today. We're, we're going to beat this lot because the crowd are already against them. Um, and... I enjoyed my goal that day as well. Um, nice little flick, a well worked um, corner, um, which I don't think anyone's scored from since either. So maybe I'm a one hit wonder on these corners. We might need to start making up some new ones. Um, and it was a, it turned out to be a really successful season for the for the club and and individually. Um, I got some good amount of goals and and played uh, a lot of football as well, which was really enjoyable. Talking of change, the head of the following season, a massive change in your appearance. <laughs> yeah, stinking. I think it was the beginning of the end of my hair, you know. Um, probably the amount of dye that went into it kind of frazzled it away and it started disappearing. 
So the, the, only, the one thing I will say is I kind of had to do something before it disappeared. Obviously it's come back now. But um, at that period of time, it was like, okay, I need to change something up to kind of enjoy my hair a little bit before it. I followed a family um, trait and it disappears. So I've got a bit of stick, but a few actually still talk about it now and say I should do it now. So it obviously lasted. It's, uh, it impressed a few people. A few hair-raising moments in that Liverpool game, 4-3. You scored the club's highest finish in the Premier League, ninth. What a fantastic day that was. What a fantastic season. Yeah, this day was my favourite, even even to the to this day. It's to be 2-0 down and 3-1 down and come back and win 4-3 in the, in the style and the manner we did was, yeah, nothing short of amazing, really, because there were some, some great goals in there. Um, it was a game that really sparked some players' careers. Um, the celebrations after the, the team that we had was 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 really strong. Um, then, uh, obviously, with Jack Wilshere there as well, a, a, high, a hugely high-profile obviously signing for the club. Then, and um, we was in a really, really good place. And to this day, yeah, the, the Liverpool match will will never be forgotten because it was. The first time we beat them, um, such an amazing club uh, with the historic future that they've had. It, it was, yeah, yeah, it makes me smile just thinking about it. And the following season, your penchant for important goals. This one, I, I think this picture just absolutely sums things up, really. Yeah, it was, um, I had a lot to prove this day. I, I, it was the first time really in my career my Bournemouth career where I'd been dropped. I'd obviously come out of the team for injuries and whatnot, but I actually, I, I was dropped um, a few games before. I was, I was having a, a tough time on the pitch. Um, just had um, the second second child, so the sleep and, and whatnot was, wasn't great. And I was, I was performing not, not fantastically well and I come out of the team and I came back into the team this game one nil away at Newcastle. Obviously, last minute header was was a perfect response, and to send out a message to obviously the staff then was like, okay, I'm here to stay now. And um, yeah, again, it was a tough tough time being dropped for the first time in probably seven eight years. Well, at the time, maybe seven years was it was hard to take, and probably very fortunate as well. I've gone <laughs> a, a long time without experiencing that, but. It's never nice and to score at such a great, great stadium as well and look up and see the, into the distance our fans and, and their celebrations was, was amazing. From an incredible high at St James's Park to last season, the incredible low at that Carrow Road where you said already, you know, it's somewhere that you haven't got great memories of and you certainly won't have great memories of your first sending off either you're there, you are waiting for the VAR decision. Yeah, I was praying. I was praying for an offside or, or something in there. Um, a really, really, really obviously a poor, awful decision. Um, to this day, I can't really explain to you what went through my head. It was maybe more of a, I don't know, can't really uh, describe it to you. It was a horrific, horrific afternoon for myself. Um, really not the stuffing out of my, me and I, I, like I said, I'd never been sent off. I'd never, I'd made mistakes um, playing, but nothing like I'd done then. Um, received a lot of bad messages. I had people ring me that I hadn't spoke to for a long time. I had, you know, social media blows up because they love something like this. And it, it was, it was tough actually. It was um, hard to come back from, especially in the season where we were struggling. This was a, a period where we targeted a lot of points with the teams around us and, and, and didn't manage to get them. And obviously we went on to lose this game, even after having good chances in this game, even at being 10, with 10 men, we didn't get something in it. The, the change room was really low after and it was down to me. So something that you kind of are gonna get in your career, these really low points, but this was very unique. It was a, just a really bad decision. And then on the final day of last season, here you are walking off at Goodison Park. It was a great 3-1 victory, but unfortunately, it didn't count for anything in the end. Your 168th 
Premier League appearance to date, which is the most the club's got. Just give us your sort of memories of that that day. Yeah, really um, bizarre day. You know, we we went into this game confident that we would we would get the win. Um, but I think the damage was done the week before. We had an opportunity to to have it in our control, uh, and we we went from having a real high from such scoring to it being disallowed. To then in in this game, knowing that we had to had to win to control the, the not even to control the outcome. Sorry to to just give us a, a glimmer of hope. But when we received the news that obviously Villa had gone gone one 0 up, it was you kind of just wanted to sink into the ground and kind of have it have it end then because the last 10, 15 minutes of that game was um, really, really hard to, to think then. It was possibly your last Premier League game. Um, the journey that the club had been on, um, the season being drawn out for such a long time, Yeah, it was it was an awful moment in my career, but something now that I look back on and think maybe um, you can turn into a positive. And I'd said obviously in the in pre just now that you're going to get low points in your career individually, um, which you you have anyway, losing games and poor performances, but relegation sticks with you. Performances you can kind of dust under the carpet and, and go again. Relegations, my first one at the highest level. Never nice, but you have to try and put a positive spin on it. You don't want this to happen again, or how do you respond to it? I listen to a lot of podcasts now and the high performance ones and whatnot, and everyone you speak to is, do they fear failure or are you not used to fail? And I do think you have to fail now to, to realise what you had and um, if you can go again. So I'm really positive that we can respond to to this picture it's an awful picture i don't like looking at it but hopefully in eight months time six months time whenever it is i can have another interview and say to you this was this defined the club and myself and the final picture there is from the nottingham forest game where it has to be said you're a very rare breed to make 350 appearances for the same club in this this day and age steve you're hopes obviously for this season you you said that you hope you haven't made your last Premier League appearance what what are you hoping for sort of short term and long term this season yeah um, short term obviously to try and stay in this team I know um, it's difficult injury wise um, with the players we've got the competition we've got amongst the ranks it's going to be tough um, so my short term goal obviously is to stay in the team and and contribute long term is to, to get the club back into the or help get, get the club back into the Premier League at the first time of asking we've we've given ourselves a, a good start a good opportunity um, we're playing some some lovely stuff at the moment um, but we know it's only early days and like I say if, if the club if, if this group of players can manage to bring the club back up to the Premier League and I can hopefully be amongst it and add to the 168 that I've made in the Premier League, it would be an incredible achievement and something that I feel that the players that we have got now deserve because um, I think few in, in our ranks were, were let down and now we've got a chance to put that right. Congratulations on a memorable milestone, Steve. Hopefully there'll be many more to come in your time with AFC Bournemouth. Thank you. Cheers, Neil.